to get us warmed up for the day. So where do we start? <laughs> new day, but what's 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 the new strand today? Well, we're seeing more of these asset sales. So Ryerson is potentially looking to sell its EV unit. Okay. Now we know it's already showing quite significant signs of stress. Has a very low credit rating already. Hmm. It's also looking to exchange these two dollar bonds, one in January, one in April. Um, so not unusual. I mean, this they're just joining the throngs here. Shimao also sold its Hong Kong project, uh, tr trying to sell it at a loss. Uh, Sunak also looking to offload assets and raise cash. So it's really joining sort of the throngs of these distressed or stressed property developers struggling to raise cash for as long as the offshore market is shut. This is one of the only ways that they will be able to right. start repaying and rolling over some of that debt. So they are really in a bind here. Rebecca, we're also hearing, uh, you know, I guess you kind of have to read the lines, read between the lines, if you were in state media, that there's some strong encouragement in terms of supporting financing for these so-called quality developer projects. Absolutely. So that's sort of the other side of the coin here is who exactly is going to buy all of these assets in these projects that um, property firms are having to sell. Now state firms have been encouraged in the past as well to sort of potentially step in and take on some of that risk. And one thing that we're kind of looking to in 2022 is potentially seeing not just more state developers stepping in to do that, but perhaps also more LGFEs. Now LGFEs have always played a sort of slightly ambiguous role in the Chinese economy. They've supported local governments. Um, but we could, of course, see more LGFEs stepping in to buy these assets, particularly when it comes to property, almost as an alternative. I mean, what we've seen is this incredible clampdown, predominantly on private firms, uh, when it comes to developers. And that does leave an opportunity. Um, so some investors looking perhaps at those uh, local government financing vehicles for opportunities going into next year. Um, I mean, LGFEs and state property developers don't offer, of course, those juicy yields, those juicy upsides that many private developers do. But that that could be where the sort of longer term future of the sector is going, particularly when you see that sales for many property developers are still under so much pressure. If we see another month of weak sales, it does really sort of weaken the idea that property developers in the long term will be able to shore up their finances. Fundamentally, there's two things that need to happen. On the one hand, we need to say sales improving. And number two, we need to see the offshore market once again reopening for developers. Now, so long as those two things don't happen, Firms like LGFEs, firms like higher quality developers that you mentioned, Heidi, and state-run developers, they will be likely to step in and fill that gap.